Our thought for today is, silence is golden. Unless you have a toddler, then silence is very suspicious. Today we honor St. John Chrysostom called the golden tongue, the golden mouth. That was the name that he was given because every word he spoke was pure gold, especially if you read his writings. We're so blessed to have 700 of his sermons, over five volumes of his works are still available to us. You can read some of them online or the Office of Readings. St. John Chrysostom, great, one of the greatest bishops and doctor of the church, born in Antioch in the year 347. His father was of the Latin rite, his mother was of the Greek rite, and she became a young widow when she was only 20 years of age. Her husband died, so John really never knew his father since his father died when John was just a young child. But his mother never remarried. She devoted herself entirely to the education and the raising of her son. She made sure he had the finest of classical educations. John became a catechumen, was baptized at the age of 18. And he went off to study at one of the monastic schools. And then for about six years, he lived as a hermit, as a monk, he lived in a cave doing prayer and penance and studying sacred scripture. He did that until he felt God was calling him to the priesthood. So then he uh, went back to Antioch, was eventually ordained a priest, spent about 12 years preaching in Antioch until he was then chosen as the next bishop. Again, as I mentioned, given the name, the golden tongue, most of his sermons lasted two hours. Imagine that going to a sermon that lasts two hours. And yet people would listen because of his great holiness and his great wisdom. And so in the year 398, he was chosen to be a bishop. And even though he was a bishop, he lived a life really of poverty, giving his possessions to the poor, living a life of simplicity. He used his money to build hospitals. Well, again, the Catholic Church is one of the first ones ever to really developed the hospital system, helping the, the sick and the, the needy. He reformed uh, the clergy and was able to speak out against the problems of his day. Most of them had to do with the emperor and his wife. Because of that, he was exiled. He was exiled a number of times. On one occasion, even 600 miles, he had to walk from Constantinople where he was bishop which is modern-day Istanbul, and he died, it seems, of pneumonia or exposure to the elements when he was exiled. Even though he was not, not considered a martyr, he is considered a confessor of the faith, somebody who witnesses to the faith by a saintly life. He died in the year 407, and I'll just mention one or two of his writings, one of my favorite paragraphs that he wrote is in the Legion of Mary handbook. And he talks about the good thief. He says, this robber stole paradise. No one before him ever received such a promise, not Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, or Moses, or any of the prophets, or even the apostles. This thief pressed in before all these, but his faith also surpassed theirs. He saw Jesus tormented, and yet adored him as if he were in glory. He saw him nailed to a cross, and yet petitioned him as if he were enthroned. He saw him condemned, and asked a favor of him as of a king. O admirable thief, thou didst see a crucified man, yet thou didst proclaim God. That's just one example of the beauty of the writings of St. John Chrysostom, probably one of my favorite bishops and doctors of the church. And I'll just read one other short paragraph from the Office of Readings. It's about the persecution of the church. He says, the waters have risen and severe storms are upon us, but we do not fear drowning, for we stand firmly upon a rock. Let the sea rage, it cannot break the rock. Let the waves rise, they cannot sink the boat of Christ. What are we to fear, death? Life to me means Christ and death is gain. Do I fear exile? The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. 
Do I fear the confiscation of my goods? We brought nothing into this world. We shall surely not take anything from it. I have only contempt for the, this world's threats. I find its blessings laughable. I have no fear of poverty, no desire for wealth. I am not afraid of death, nor do I long to live except for your good. I concentrate therefore upon the present situation and I urge you, my friends, to have confidence. So you can see why his writings are still cherished today. So again, encourage you to read the writings of this great saint. I'll give you a blessing now with a relic of St. John Chrysostom, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. Through the intercession of St. John Chrysostom, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.